Hello, my name is Travis Mashburn, and to begin today, could I have you all please close your eyes. Now, imagine that you're a young child. You're very sick, and you've lost both your mother and your father. You've been placed in a care system where, luckily, there's a ton of children to play with, but you're only receiving meager meals and just enough care to get you by. So you meet tons of couples, and you talk with them, and you play with them, and you get to know them, but it always seems like they're adopting other children except for you. Maybe it's because you're so sick that you don't have time, or you're not able to get to meet these people, or maybe it's because your behavior problems are so bad they don't feel like they can give you the right care. Finally, you meet one couple, but there's something very peculiar about this couple. They're two men. You talk with them, and you get to know them, and you play with them, and you feel like everything's going great. You love them, and they really love you too. As soon as they're ready to make the decision to adopt you, legislation is passed that same-sex couples are no longer allowed to adopt. You grow up, you leave the system, you're on your own, on the streets, hungry, sick, and trying to even just get yourself in jail so that you know you can at least have a hot meal or a bed to sleep in. Would you all open your eyes for me? 80,000 children go without being adopted every year in the United States. This is according to Sabrina Tavernese, Adoptions Rise by Same-Sex Couples Despite Legal Barriers. Today, I'm going to speak about gay adoption and hopefully by the end you'll understand and support same-sex couples that are trying to give children a better life. First, I'm going to speak about gay adoption. Helpful or hurtful? <coughs> Could it help solve a problem? Second, I'm going to speak on the effect on children, good or bad. Are there any effects from gay parents? And finally, leaving children in foster care, beneficial or not, would foster programs be better than gay parents? Now that you know what I'm speaking about today, let's move on to gay adoption, helpful or hurtful. This information comes from David Brzezinski, Adoptions by Lesbian and Gay Men, A New Dimension, Dimension in Family Diversity. Here you see we have a graph of the number of children in foster care in the years 1990, 2000, and 2010. You see in 1990, the numbers are just below 400,000. In 2000, we have a huge spike to over 500,000 children in foster care. In 2010, we see that the numbers have decreased and are just about 400,000 again, and that's a great thing that people are adopting. But if we allowed same-sex couples to adopt children, these numbers would be even lower, especially considering that 40% of gay couples that have adopted adopt sickly or mistempered children. So that means almost half of gay couples that have been lucky enough to adopt have adopted children <coughs> that are either sick and have HIV, or children that are misbehaved and try to give them good care. Now that you know how gay adoption can be helpful, let's move on to the effect on children, good or bad. This information comes from Todd Flowerday, gays and lesbians should be allowed to be foster parents. The first myth is kids are best off in a family with a father and mother. Research shows that same-sex couples raise children that are as equally adjusted as children raised by a father and mother. So it doesn't matter, matter if a child is raised by two moms or two dads. They come out just as equally adjusted as a child with a mother and a father. The second myth is children raised by gay parents will grow up to be gay. Research also shows that the majority of children raised by same-sex couples turn out to be heterosexual. This research shows that there's no correlation between child rearing and homosexuality. Also, children that grow up to be homosexual are usually able to come out better and be more accepting of themselves and others. And finally, gay parents molest their children. Studies show that there is no connection between homosexuality and pedophilia and that there is no basis for this myth. It's more of a malicious attack on gay people. Now that you know the effect on children, let's talk about foster homes. Are they beneficial or not? This information comes from Zach Ford, Kansas Supreme Court Rules in Favor of Same-Sex Marriage. First, 40 to 50% of children in foster care do not graduate high school. This means nearly to half of all the children that are in these foster care homes will never get a formal education and never be able to better themselves in society. 
if we allowed same-sex couples to adopt more children, these children would have a chance of going to high school, maybe going to college, and pursuing and having a better life for themselves. Second, 66% of foster children will be homeless, go to jail, or die within a year of leaving the system. That means over half the children in foster programs will be on the streets, barely able to survive, fighting for their lives, or they go to jail because of issues they've had in the past, or maybe because that's the only way they know how to take care of themselves. And some of these children, they just, they die because they have no way to take care of themselves and they lose their lives. Finally, foster children without a permanent home do not receive normal physical examination and have poor health than children um, in permanent homes. There's so many children in these foster care programs, they're not always able to see doctors and they're not always able to get the treatment that they need. And sometimes they get diseases that could be fatal. And if same-sex couples were allowed to adopt, less of these children would be in foster homes and more children they would receive the physical examination and the care that they need. Now that you know how leaving children in foster care might not be so beneficial, how many of you would go with me to Congress right now and protest that gay adoption should be allowed in the entire country? Now how many of you would at least sign a petition that promotes passing a law to legalize gay adoption in the United States? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ron LaFong. Uh, may I have everybody close their eyes? All right. Imagine you're about six to nine years old and you're at home and you're getting, uh, you're not getting as much attention as you need because you're living with a single parent and your mom is always at work or your dad is always at work. Um, you're exposed to drug use and gang violence when you go to school and you just feel like you're gonna be a part of this statistic. And then now imagine going to a place where you feel accepted. You walk in and all you see is different colors and people that care and everyone wants to talk to you and you're making new friends. Now open your eyes. According to BGCCF.org Milestones and Success in 2012, in 2012, the Tupperware Brands Boys and Girls Club served a total of 1,304 at-risk youths from our local Osceola County community. Today, I will be talking to you about the milestones that the Boys and Girls Club reached, Uh, what impact it can have on the lives of our youth, the demographics of youth attending the Boys and Girls Club, statistics in different races that attend the clubs, and the purpose of the Boys and Girls Club, the mission statement, and why they do what they do. Now that I've told you about the, the, the three things I'll be talking about, the first thing I'll be telling you about is the milestones that the Boys and Girls Club reach. According to the BGCCF.org of 2012, in 2012, our club members are surrounded by crime. Yet, there were zero arrests among Tupperware Brands Boys and Girls Club members. In comparison, 458 juveniles made up 7% of the arrests in Osceola County during just the first six months of 2012. Two, there were zero pregnancies among 378 female members ages 10 to 18 at the Boys and Girls Club. There were 184 babies born to girls 18 years old or younger in Osceola County. And three, 100% of the club members who were seniors during 2011 and 2012 graduated and all 27 of them are at four-year colleges. Now that I told you about the milestones and that the Boys and Girls Club reached, now I'm going to talk to you about the demographics um, that these kids go through. Uh, According to BGCCF.org slash demographics in 2012, there are more Caucasian youth that attend the Boys and Girls Club than African American. That is actually wrong. There are 6% of Caucasians that attend the Boys and Girls Club and 22% African American. Uh, two, most youth that attend Boys and Girls Club live at home with both parents. 
that's actually wrong also. 65% of the youth come from single parent families. Three, most kids that attend the Boys and Girls Club have to be wealthy. That's also not true. 90% of the youth that come from, come from families with annual household incomes of $30,000 or less a year. Now that I told you the demographics, now we're going to move on to the Boys and Girls Club mission statement and what they do. The Boys and Girls Club mission statement of Central Florida is to inspire and enable all young people, especially those of disadvantaged circumstances, to reach their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring citizens. This basically is saying that those kids that feel like they're, they're not going to be anything or being told that they won't be anything, this is saying that they're going to help them realize that they could. They could go on to the next level, to college, or to be the next CEO of a big company. So that's basically what their mission statement is. Um, here, I was a product of the Boys and Girls Club. Um, different opportunities that you get. Uh, this is the president of Boys and Girls Club, and basically, he does whatever he can to make sure that our clubs are good and to make sure that we're getting opportunities that bring us forward in life. Here's one of the opportunities that some of the club kids got when Dwight Howard was playing for the Orlando Magic. He took four of these kids on a shopping spree at Target and they got to pick out uh, $200 worth of toys during the Christmas time. So they give opportunity and hope to children so that they feel like someone is there that care or if their parents or their households can't afford, people are, are willing to help. And also this is another opportunity that uh, some of our kids got that we got to go on a cruise. Uh, most of the kids here is their first time going. So uh, like I was saying, there was a lot of opportunity. I hope some people think that they'll never get this opportunity. Well, they make it happen. So basically that's what this last picture is saying. So uh, by a show of hands, how many will volunteer at their local Boys and Girls Club at least three times a week? All right, well, how many will consider sending their future children or at least spread the word to our community about sending kids to the Boys and Girls Club? All right, thank you. All right. If everybody could please close their eyes, and I'll start by telling you a few points. Imagine, imagine you're at home resting, just minding your own business, loving your family with everything you are. On one simple and ordinary day, your family puts you in the car and starts driving. You're just an ordinary, it's just an ordinary day, but there's something odd. When you get to a strange building, your loved one takes you in, and as you watch him, watch, you watch his back, he just slowly walks away. The next day, you say, he's coming back for me. You wait, and he's not, he doesn't come back. The day after, he doesn't come back. After a few weeks, they just put you down, and that's it, that's all of you. Three to four million dogs and cats in America are euthanized each year. Uh, my presentation is gonna be about animal adoption, and I'm gonna give you a few points about it. What do you think, unless, um, shelter statistics, raise your boys, and how you can take a stand. Now that I've presented my three main points, I'm going to present to you um, a few mis misdemeanors about you know, adoption and shelter. This information was acquired from ASPCA, and most people think you can only find stray dogs in a shelter, uh, but more than 25% of dogs are actually purebred. Um, animals in the shirt are only found are the only ones that are found in the streets. But more than 20% of shelter dogs are actually brought in by owners who have actually adopted them from a shelter. Uh, having dogs more expensive than having a baby. And studies have actually shown that the average you would spend in a pet is from a dollar fifty to two dollars and sixty-five cents a day, less than a cup of coffee. Um, now that I show you a few misdemeanors about adoption, um, sh I'm going to show you the shelter statistics uh, of just um, Columbia, a, a shelter in Columbia, and this information was from Urban Rescues. Um, 
the animals that were taken in that year alone in that shelter was over, uh, was around 4,700. 10% were returned to the owners. 18% were transferred. 28% were adopted. And 44% were euthanized. Um, the total amount of animals in that shelter alone was over 20,000 in that year alone. Uh, raise your, now that I show you the statistics of a few shelters in the United States, um, I can show you how you can raise your voice and take a stand. Everybody needs a dog and the, a hog, and this information was from Dog Adoptions Headquarters. About 78 million uh, dogs and 86 million cats are in the United States, and around 70 million are stray animals in the streets. Um, they're estimated that 70, um, that's like, um, most people actually prefer to go to a pet shop or a breeder because they think they're going to be a better breed. But what they don't realize is that more, most breeders actually uh, fake the certificate, and most uh, pet shops actually get their dogs from puppy mills. And what this is is actually a place where they have a few dogs that they breed. They use them until they're probably like four years old. Just keep breeding them. They have them in really poor conditions, barely any water, barely any food, uh, cage. Uh, floors mean their paws can get stuck. You know, it's just a horrible condition to keep a living animal. Uh, for the first one.
when you or a loved one is are looking for a pet. Thank you, everybody. Begin with, I would like to, everyone to close their eyes. Um, now imagine a lake or a river you used to go when you were a child. And suddenly, you, you see that it's full of trash, soda cans, plastic bags, empty water bottles, and more trash. And when, look, and when you look up at the sky, you can barely see the sun because of all the air pollution in the air. You open your eyes. The average American discards 4.43 pounds of garbage every day, according to EPA Municipal Solid Waste Generation. Go green. My topic is go green. <coughs> My main topics are, is it really important? Would it kill not to? Why should we care? Dangers? How will future generations be affected? And consequences? Now that you know what we'll be talking about, my first topic is, is it really important? Would it kill not to? According to Terry Benedetti, Bennett, Green Myth, Deepbond, the truth behind eco-friendly tips. Um, well, everyone thinks that what goes down the storm drain will be filtered. In reality, unlike what goes down the drain at home, this isn't filtered, so it goes straight to our oceans, rivers, even lakes. Everyone thinks global warming is to cause some rates. Again, actually, human activity is the cause of this earth getting warmer. So everyone not thinking of what they're doing, like just throwing anything away on the floor or just whatever, it's causing the earth have global warming. Everyone thinks death by pollution is not more than 10%. But about 40% of deaths worldwide are caused by water pollution, air, and soil pollution. So you see that all. So this is why it's really important and it would kill not to. Now that you know about this topic, the next. Why should we care? Dangers. According to Lynn Lawrence and Religion and Science, what is the state? This, this represents the amount of empty water bottles that are thrown away every five minutes. You see that it's a lot of it. So imagine this landing all in our oceans, lakes, even in the parks, anywhere. It could cause problems. It could kill our animals. It can really cause dangers to us. Um, more than a billion people in, will not get clean water around the world. This boy is pouring back the water he got from the stream because it's so polluted he cannot take this water to his family where they need it the most and he needs to throw it back into the water. The last one is, this is a landfill. This is accumulated trash, and it requires a lot of attention. And it needs to be carefully monitored for methane gas, a thin liquid that comes out when it decomposes and loses weight. Methane gas, methane gas is really harmful because it harms the atmosphere, atmosphere and it creates global warming. The thin liquid gets into the ground, and it gets into the water that's really beneath the ground, and it actually contaminates the water, so we cannot be able to drink it or anything like that. And the loose weight can be often, it can often form really dust for rats, insects, and other kinds of animals that can carry around diseases. Now that you know why should we care in the futures, <coughs> I'll go to how will future generations be affected in consequence? According to Toledo Mata, Ramon Toledo Mata, the Green Data Center, how green can we perform? It's, and this data shows the, that in 20, 2010, the water supply exceeds, exceeds the demand. And then as the year has passed, 
it keeps on decreasing the supply for water. And when we get to 2020, it shows that actually the demand for water is more than the supply we have. And in 2025, it also shows that more. So as the years keep passing, we keep getting the demand for water is higher than the supply. So as we don't take care of, what we, of our water now and keep on littering our water, keep on throwing trash anywhere, it can actually affect us in the end because we'll end up, instead of fighting for oil, we'll start fighting for water, for the basic resource. Now that you know how future generations will be affected, I would like to ask if you would go to your house and replace all your belongings with, with eco-friendly materials. If that's too much to ask, I would like to ask if you will go to your house and have in mind how much water you use and be aware of where you throw your garbage. Thank you. Friends, and can I ask you all to address? Picture you're on your computer about to buy something with a credit card. Little do you know, the so-called seller of that item you purchased is just what we need for your information. Days later, you realize your money is vanishing drastically and you're beginning to lose grip of everything you own, including who you are. Approximately 15 million U.S. residents have their identities used fraudulently each year, with financial losses totaling up towards $50 billion. And this came from identity.info. Uh, today, I will be talking to you about identity theft, uh, the, the theft types, online dangers, washing your and how it affects you emotionally and physically. Now that I have gone over my main points, I'll tell you about the types. Credit card fraud is fraud committed by using credit cards or any similar payment mechanisms, such as checks and debit cards. Um, utility fraud is usually stealing power from other houses. Um, bank fraud is the means to obtain money assets or other property that owned or held by financial institutions. Employment fraud is scamming people seeking or performing employment. Loan fraud is purposely giving incorrect information on applications in order to better qualify for loan. And government fraud is knowing misrepresentations of the truth or concealment of material facts used to the government to act on its own detriment, such as tax evasion and welfare fraud. Others that would fall into that category would be medical theft, social security theft, and child theft. Now that I have talked to you about the types, I will talk to you about the online dangers. This comes from Enterprise Equity Planet. Uh, personal information is not exposed online. Uh, businesses store documents on electronic databases that can be easily accessed by any employee. It happens at random. Most offenders know who you are and are either close friends, relatives, or people who have been interacted with at least once. Social networking privacy settings keep me out of risk. Your information is never safe. Social networking sites sell your information to other businesses and partners. Identity theft can be prevented. Keeping your financial records safe, shredding junk mail, and monitoring your transactions are some steps to help prevent identity theft. Now that I have talked to you about the dangers, I will be talking to you about how it affects you. Uh, victims of identity theft may feel overwhelmed, helplessness, anger, betrayal, depression, or embarrassment. Uh, this crime triggers deep fears regarding financial security, uh, the safety of their family members, and the ability to ever trust again. Um, it can also lead to stalking, either physically or through the internet, which is by sending manipulative or threatening and harassing messages. And identity theft can lead to physical harm uh, that ranges from rape, domestic violence, and self-harm. And now that I've told you about the emotional and physical feelings, um, who here stopped using the internet? Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
um, just because the server doesn't give you like the best service in the world, um, they never deserve like a no tip or to be jipped or whatever because it's just not fair. Like they still have to, you know, they still have to eat and they still have to provide for their family. And then, um, like, so tip employees are uh, are people with bills as well. This came from the complete guide for tips and gratitude in 2009. Let's do what's right. Um, raise your hand if you're willing to tip at least a hundred dollars to the next server that takes care of you to make up for the night for what she is, she, or he or she hasn't been tipped properly. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're just stretching. <laughs> and how many of you are willing to tip at least fifty percent of your check to the server they deserve? Thank you. No,